next screenplay is Never Seen You Shine So Bright by Jessica Lee Williamson. Jessica, are you here? This was based on a story told by Glenn Jeffers. Glenn works to redeem himself after an embarrassing stage fright experience. It's like me here tonight. Um, Jessica, Hi. welcome. I'm so nervous um, to have this read out loud. Uh, well, Glenn's story was about performing in a talent show uh, and I think kind of failing at it. Um, and that was a big story, so I wanted to try and make it keep the essence of it uh, in something that you could do in eight pages. And then that's the obvious inspiration from it. And then I was also inspired, there was an element of his story where he was a young African-American boy growing up kind of in this white suburb and kind of being put in these situations that maybe seemed out of place in a way. And it kind of reminded me of being a teenager and saying yes to things because you don't know who you are yet. Uh, so I'll just leave it at that. I also want to apologize to you guys because I bet there's a lot of typos. Wait, Jessica, <laughs> Jessica, don't run away. Oh, Choose okay. your director. Okay. okay. So funny because it's my friend Anna Christopher. <laughs> Woo! All right, never seen you shine so bright. Exterior Montclair Day. Dressed in a red polo shirt and khaki pants, Glenn Davis, 19, African American, is waiting at a crosswalk. His black rimmed glasses and cowering posture suggest he's the shy, studious type. The light changes, and we follow Glenn as he walks down the busy streets of Montclair, California. A monument to corporate chain restaurants and retailers, this could be any suburb in America. Glenn passes the usual haunts Best Buy, Dick's Sporting Goods, the Olive Garden until he finds himself at a Target. He pulls a name tag out of his pocket, pins it on his shirt, and walks inside. Interior, Target, break room, later. Glenn is reading a book on his break. Across from him, his best friend and co-worker, Esther, 19, dry, is eating popcorn while writing in a notebook. I'm taking a poll for my final statistics project. If you had to give Donald Trump or O.J. Simpson a hand job, which would you pick? <laughs> Neither. Less on an option. You have to pick one, or you and everyone you love will die a terrible death. Fine. Uh, I guess I pick OJ, assuming prison has humbled him. Esther e adds his answer to the tally in her notebook. Everybody picks OJ. <laughs> Glenn notices Kaylee Wilkins, 19, heating up a lean cuisine in the employee microwave. Kaylee's attractive in the arbitrary way teenagers deem one another attractive. Her slightly above average face and tight clothes will only carry her drab personality a few more years at best. <laughs> of course, Glenn doesn't know that, and so he watches her longingly. Do you like her? Um, no. Another coworker, Alex, 20, approaches. Kaylee approaches Kaylee and gives her a flirtatious coworker shoulder massage. He's confident and smooth. Everything Glenn is not. I heard she showed him her titties in the long and garden section during inventory last month. I'll bet it was that same corner where the homeless man took a shit. Why are you telling me this? I'm just saying it's a very hidden corner with lots of privacy. He said he didn't like her. Sorry. Quietly heartbroken, Glenn watches as Alex helps Kaylee hang a yellow piece of paper on the employee bulletin board. Esther grabs her notebook and heads towards them. I'm taking a poll for a statistics project. Later that day, with the break room now empty, Glenn takes a look at the yellow paper on the bulletin board. Made with a generic Microsoft template, it features a microphone along with some music symbols. The text reads, Kaylee's Birthday Karaoke with DJ Biz Please. <laughs> From behind Glenn, we hear, The DJ's my cousin, Anthony. Glenn turns around to see Kaylee and does his best to play it cool. He's professional. He hosts karaoke night at Mr. Ramen. He also does weddings and special birthdays for Jewish kids. You got a song, right? Mine is beautiful because, like, I believe in the message. Alex is singing Bitches and Marijuana. Sure, yeah. I got a song. He doesn't have a song. <laughs> Kaylee gets into her car. Cool. Maybe I'll see you there. Exterior street, night. 
Glenn walks home under the sad fluorescent streetlights. He watches the cars driving by him, each one emanating a different kind of music. It's Saturday night in the suburbs, and Glenn is a teenager in search of his song. While waiting at a crosswalk, he notices a flyer advertising singing lessons. He doesn't pay it much mind, but after giving it a second thought, he rips the phone number from the bottom of the flyer just as the walk sign appears. Exterior house, day. Dressed in his work uniform, Glenn hesitantly rings the doorbell. After a moment, Neil Palmer, 60, British, opens the door. Neil's an earnest man who takes his job as Montclair's go-to go -to classical voice coach very, very seriously. You must be Glenn. <laughs> Interior house, day. Glenn watches as Neil reads Kaylee's invitation. So, you want me to pay, you want to pay me to help you prepare for Kaylee's birthday karaoke? <laughs> yes, I told her I already had a song. Do you have an idea what you want this song to be? Mm, I was thinking something by Justin Bieber or Z Zayn Malik. Justin Bieber. Uh, is that the Canadian playboy with a pet monkey? <laughs> I'm not sure where he's from. Can I make a suggestion? Use this as an opportunity to tell her how you feel. Yeah? Tell me about Kate. Well, uh, I hardly know her. I mean, she's got highlights. <laughs> she sounds very special. <laughs> oh, and, and she wears a uniform. Uh, Neil motions to Glenn's red polo shirt. A red shirt like yours? Yeah. Something clicks for Neil, and he gets excited. I think I have a song that will make her feel like a special girl she is. It's a timeless love song by the one and only Krista Berg. The wonders of Krista Berg are lost on Glenn. Lady in Red? Huh? It topped the charts in 1986. Glenn isn't sure this is a good idea. Yeah, but every girl I work with wears a red shirt. So how will she know that she's the Lady in Red? Oh, she'll know, Glenn. She'll know. Neil places his hand over Glenn's heart. As long as you sing it from here. Now, let's get started. Neil walks over to the piano and begins playing the scales. Cut to a montage of Glenn preparing for the big night. Glenn walking to work with headphones on, mouthing the words to Lady in Red. Glenn collecting empty shopping carts in the parking lot, still mouthing the words to Lady in Red. On a television, a video of the karaoke version of Lady in Red is playing. Glenn reads the words while singing. Neil gives him some enthusiastic tips. If you're nervous, close your eyes. You'll already know the words. Glenn in the break room, headphones in and reading the Lady in Red lyrics of a website. Esther is next to him, pen and notebook in hand. Would you rather be mauled to death by a pack of pit bulls or a pack of wolves? Definitely a pack of wolves. Later, still in the break room, Glenn gives Kaylee a casual smile. There's a new confidence about him. He's ready for his musical debut. Interior Kaylee's house, night. The party's underway and people are mingling. Glenn enters the house and makes his way to the DJ table, where he begins to fill out his karaoke request list. Esther approaches him, eyeing his pressed but cheap button-down shirt and slacks. You look like one of those guys who signs people up for checking accounts at Bank of America. I thought you said karaoke was for people who are desperate for attention. It is. That doesn't mean I don't like to watch him beg for it. Esther tries to catch a glimpse of Glenn's slip, but he folds it up too quickly and drops it in the request jar. Later, Glenn and Esther are on the couch watching a partygoer perform an underwhelming rendition of Rock Lobster. Though he pretends he doesn't notice, Glenn begins to grow uncomfortable when he sees Kaylee and Alex flirting nearby. As Rock Lobster comes to a close, DJ Biz Please, 23, makes an announcement. Coming up to the stage to slow things down. Put your hands together for Glenn Davis. A wallflower in the corner is the only person who claps. Glenn walks up to the makeshift stage and anxiously picks up the microphone. He checks to see if Kaylee's watching. She's still talking to Alex, putting Glenn in his head even more. On the karaoke screen, the words Lady in Red in the style of Chris de Berg appear. The slow romantic beat of the steel drums kick in and Glenn waits for his cue. 
He stumbles to the first few lines, only singing a couple words here and there. But finally, he takes a deep breath, closes his eyes, and suddenly, all that practice pays off. I have never seen that dress you're wearing or the highlights in your hair. They catch your eyes. I have been blind, lady in red. Glenn's singing skills leave a lot to be desired. <laughs> but it is from the heart. After a few more lines, we pull out to reveal Hester is the only person at the party who's paying attention. Kaylee's giggling at something Alex whispered in her ear when she recognizes the song Glenn's singing and quickly turns around to watch. But I hardly know this beauty by my side. I'll never forget the way you look tonight. While waiting for the next verse to start, Glenn opens his eyes to see Kaylee watching him. Nervous, he closes his eyes again and continues. I've never seen you looking so gorgeous as you did tonight. I've never seen you shine so bright. You were amazing. Kaylee looks horrified. This is my parents' wedding song. I walked in on them having sex to it once. <laughs> Alex starts laughing and tells one of his friends. His word spreads throughout the party. More and more chuckles join him. Glenn opens his eyes to find he's the center of attention. Committed, he finishes the song. I never will forget the way you look tonight. The lady in red, the lady in red, the lady in red. I love you. Glenn hurries off stage as Esther leads the crowd. They erupt into a loud cheer. An unwitting partygoer gives him a high five. That was freaking hilarious, man. <laughs> Thank you. Later, Glenn and Esther are heading out when they see Alex and Kaylee making out by the coat rack. Glenn awkwardly reaches behind them to grab his jacket before walking out the door. Exterior residential street, night. Glenn and Esther are walking home. I do think that if her parents were there, they would have enjoyed it. <laughs> that doesn't make Glenn feel any better. And I was impressed. Really? Yeah, Glenn. I've never seen you shine so bright. Shut up. You were amazing. <laughs> no, but seriously, you were, you were really good. After a moment. If it makes you feel any better, she picked Donald Trump for the hand job, and she didn't even have to think about it. <laughs> Glenn thinks about this. I guess that does make me feel better. <laughs> A little, anyway. They walk in silence under the Montclair street lights, perfectly comfortable in one another's presence. The end. Never seen you shine so bright. Jessica, you've outdone yourself. <laughs>